Well, hold on, hold on. You got to do a little toast here. It's our first podcast together. All right, there it is. It's not bad, huh? All right, one time so they can hear us. Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Drew Doherty. I am the co-founder of Cold Meal Productions. Sitting across from me at this table, William Robert Rolls III. He is the co-founder of Cold Meal Productions. To my right, William Robert's left, we've got RJ Jocks. No. Is that not pronounced correctly? No. I'm sorry, we discussed the pronunciations of your name. The S, many... is, the S is not heard, it's silent. Yes, it's silent. RJ Jacques. Wait. And he is a uh, graphic designer. There you go. He's uh, got de- he's got degrees in that shit. And um, if you see a logo in the near future, it will be RJ's. Probably, yeah. Was that a good intro? That's a good intro. I love the toasting, too. I didn't tell you guys we were rolling, but the toast is... I like that. That was good, too? It was good. All right, we're off to a good start. Yeah, we're uh, sitting here with pretzels and toast Tito's. And uh, Bob's got some uh, cheddar cheese Pringles over there. I'd say we got everything we need. We're set, dude. Well, we got the uh, the rolling the, the the rolling rocks too. Yeah, we're rolling some rocks. We are. And uh, this is my first time meeting RJ actually too. It is. I mean, you've it, known it, him for a while. That's yeah, that's true. Yeah, he he uh, we actually work at the same uh, pizza place. Me and RJ and uh, RJ and I. RJ and I. <laughs> that's his job, not yours. He's the grammar Nazi. No, you don't even know. It's this inside joke we got at work. Just, he does it so often now, and he doesn't even know when he's doing it, but he makes, like, minor corrections to your grammar and your speech pattern, and it's become an inside thing now to where a girl at work, every time he says anything to me, she'll go, school, like, if he just explains (laughs) something, he'll be like, well, here's why I do this this way, and he'll explain it. Bro. And then she'll just walk right in and go, schooled, and just keep walking. (laughs) So it's like the big thing. RJ schools me all night. All the time. Well, good. It's I work with him like 50 hours a week. That's all. That's all he does. So yeah. yeah. So, what are you passionate about, RJ? Um, other than schooling. Top three. Wow. Fuck. Uh, I want to say number one is probably. Let's say broadly graphic design. Um, more specifically, typography and lettering. Mm-hmm. Um, which that's just uh. Sans or Comic Sans? Oh, or Sans or Sans Serum. Okay, I was going to say. Because Comic Bold Sans... Bold right, you're, you're getting on to You're getting into like sensitive territory there, bringing up Comic Sans. Um, <clears throat> well, that's, that's, a, that's a, a touchy subject for people who are in the type. It, it is. seems to be. Um, I used it when I was younger. Now I always... I don't change my font anymore. So serifs or no serifs? It varies. It, it, it depends on the application. Um, each, each are suited for... You know, different jobs. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, based on what the uh, the application is. Um, I mean, typo- typography is really just kind of a fancy word for the way uh, text looks, and you know, it it really comes down to um, at least the way I was taught. It comes down to uh, analyzing the application and the concept mm-hmm. and kind of working from there and trying to find what uh, particular face is going to speak accurately for. Yeah, I, I mean, yeah, I agree. I mean, type says a lot about what you're trying to uh, trying to bring across. I was just looking at uh, like hidden, hidden little things in logos the other day. And it's amazing that the stuff that we just, we just gl- like gloss yeah. over like the FedEx thing, there's an arrow in there. And mm-hmm. It's crazy. Yeah, I, I've seen all of those. Uh, there's another one that, uh, it's CB drums. <coughs> uh, I actually own a CB drums kit. And for years and years and years of having this kit, I didn't realize until we were all drunk one night and a random dude pointed and goes, oh, there's a drum, there's a drum stick in the logo there. Yeah. And I never noticed it, but the way CB sat on top of drums, they left enough space for the outline of a fucking drumstick. Mm, yeah. So all that time, I had no idea. But yeah, I have a lot of respect for that kind of thing. Is it hard that's, to come up with something that's that nobody itself. will notice when it comes to graphic design? Is um, it hard to come up with the subliminal <clears throat> stuff, or can that like be taught? I mean, I don't know. I don't know that. I, you know, nothing was really taught to me as far as like making things subliminal. Like, that's what always blows my mind when people want to get into like. Oh, subliminal messages and advertising. I'm like, that's. 
I don't know where the hell you think that comes from. Like, I mean, I'm sure there's some level, you know, in specific agencies where that's, you know, a thing, but that's, you know, not really, you kind of follow as a designer, uh, you kind of follow what's put together, like a, there's going to be a plan put together by, you know, a marketing team, and uh, and if you're, say, like an art director or creative director, you'll have some input on that. But uh, I think for the most part, a lot of that is kind of uh, kind of hogwash, baloney, horseshit. Yeah. But, uh, but yeah, there was no, I mean, there was nothing in my, edu granted, it was, uh, you know, state school in, in, uh, in the Midwest, but... There was nothing in my education uh, about, you know, planning subliminal messages in logos or anything like that to that degree. Um, so, yeah. Well, I mean, not even in, like, a devious, like, I'm not trying to say, like, evil subliminal kind of way, but even how, if you look closely... Oh, you're not going Illuminati on this? No, I'm not going <laughs> Illuminati yet. We're getting, okay. we're getting there. Okay. Because me okay. and him debate Illuminati shit all the time at work, but the phone, the goddamn <laughs> phone will ring... <laughs> right when I'm about to prove him wrong, right? <laughs> and then I gotta go answer it. But no, I'm not going to Whatever you tell yourself yet. to sleep at night, Drew. <laughs> but, uh, like, even when you look at the golden arches closely, uh, mm -hmm. they're french fries. Like, each arch is three french fries. They put the dash in there when you look at it closely. Especially in signs, it's like that. So, I mean, like, even... I don't know that it was planned that way from the beginning. I think it was, you know... I'm just saying, though, that, like, not even in a devious way, like the Arrow and FedEx. Just something that's, like, right, eye-catching right, right. and that makes clever. sense within... Yeah. Something that's cute, clever, what have you. But, yeah, I think, you know, I don't think anybody from the beginning said, oh, well, this is, you know, it looks like French fries. I think it was, you know, it's, it's what is sometimes referred to more often in, like, fine arts as a happy accident. You know, something, you do something and, you know... Maybe even it's, it's just done unconsciously, and then you real you know later realize that oh, this this is the direction I should be going anyway, or it matches up with something you know meshes in you know, with something else that I'm doing. So yeah, it's like writing a comedy bit. So on the question of uh, that I asked that like is it hard to come up with something people never notice? What you're saying is sometimes you don't notice it yourself along the way. Yeah, and I mean you know it's there's a lot more oversight for sure with uh, with design, especially when you're you know. Uh, you know, working for a large client, what have you. Um, Who where, have you uh, worked with? You wouldn't mind. Um, if you wouldn't mind name dropping, you don't have to. I mean, nothing, I, I really can't mention anything that anybody would have heard of. Um, I mean, I worked for, professionally for a very short time uh, with a, at, a, at an agency that was located here in Collinsville, and then they later uh, relocated across the river to St. Louis, but... Um, while I was with them, uh, we worked on something for a a local medical supplier that was trying to develop, or had developed rather, a what was called a nutraceutical that was going to compete with, say, Zycam and um, Coldies. What the hell's the other one? Airborne, um, and it was going to. It was basically going to fall within that uh, that brand category or product category, mm -hmm. and the name that they had settled on before I got there, or no, they had it narrowed down to like three different names, um, and I think the one uh, the one they ended up settling on was Immunison, which is kind of a portmanteau of immunity and unison. Um, <coughs> But there were others that were looking at it. Munify and what the hell? I don't know. There was another one. I don't remember anymore. But um, basically, I was kind of thrown into that, and you know, they said you know develop some logos, what have you, and and then eventually you know got into packaging, and uh, that was all. You know, they ran like a uh, the agency that I was at ran that is ran a uh, a uh, focus group to kind of. Just look at things and see, you know, see what they kind of connected with compared to other existing products, and uh, and you know what they liked as far as logos, what they again, what connected with them, and, and a lot of time, the the thing with design, a lot of the times, especially when you're talking about commercial uh, product, you know, work, what have you, is that uh, 
it's not really about what you like, it's what people connect with. Mm -hmm. um, if you're working with a, with a small client, I mean, there's a, uh, there's a really good podcast I listen to a lot of times. Uh, it's called Let's Make Mistakes mm -hmm. uh, with Mike Montero, uh, who runs an agency out in San Francisco um, called Mule Design. And, uh, you know, he's a really big proponent of, you know, this idea that, you know, you, you have to do research. I mean, I think a lot of smaller uh, level agencies and, you know, uh, even just freelance designers kind of gloss over that, yeah. that it's important to go ahead and, you know, it's important to do research beforehand. And, I, and it's, I mean, it's maybe because they are f so focused, they're focused more in, uh, in web and UI design that, you know, they do as much research as they do. But, you know, he really forces, like, it's important to do, des res do research uh, before you start designing, and then you design to meet that research. Yeah. You know, find out who your, who your demogra target demographic is, uh, you know, what, what kind of things do they respond to, and then build around that idea. And, you know, he, he, it's what you, what, what the designer likes, what the client likes, is really irrelevant because you're ultimately you're trying to connect with uh, the the customer, the, the you know the dem target uh, demographic, so to speak. And so it's what you know, unless unless the customer, or the client is a uh, unless the client that you're working for is you know designing a product for themselves specifically, which that happens from time to time, whether or not they like a you know a given. Uh, piece of work is kind of irrelevant. Mm -hmm. um, it's all about you know trying to connect with that uh, that target audience. Okay. I don't know if I answered whatever the hell question it was. You no, you totally answered it. it. Okay. You totally okay. answered it. So, number two. Yes. What are you passionate about? <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, I'm gonna go with arts in general, uh, f visual arts specifically. Um, what medium? Damn, a little bit of everything. I. Uh, I mean, I like I like working in uh, I like as far as work. Well, I mean, let's let's go into uh, what you've done. <coughs> you know, this guy's worked on concerts. You know, he's pointing <laughs> that down when he talks about you know arts and all forms. Like you've worked on concerts. Uh, he told me about how he fucked up the stairs in Sesame Street Five. <laughs> <laughs> That's just uh, stagehand work. But I mean, you know, you're 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 really you're you're downplaying a little. You're really into the arts. Uh, the other thing is, uh, you've actually been to Beggars Carnival. You've been to the uh, burlesque show. Yeah. I mean, you gotta be into visual arts to even, uh, you know, to go to that. Instead you have to be interested in visual arts to go watch uh, to old go tiny to that, strip what shows. What I'm saying is in, that instead of a strip club, I think absolutely, like you have to. Have a mind for it. You know, there's some. There's the thing I, th I think about that often is, um, I mean, I, I hear a lot from you know, I, again, I listen to a lot of podcasts, and most podcasts seem to be produced in LA, and I hear a lot of discussion there about how you know there's there's a lot of uh, neo <coughs> vaudeville and burlesque going on there, and as well as other large cities, and I sometimes wonder like what is. What is driving that? And I almost wonder if it's not, uh, you know, there's some element of as readily available as just hardcore porn is in this era. Like the notion, like to the notion to just watch a watch a, a woman, uh, you know, do a little dance and a little striptease and have pasties on. Like I, there's like something quaint about it, you know. Um, I, I almost feel like there's an element of, huh. That's cute. People used to get a heart on watching that. Like I've never been sexually aroused watching a uh, watching a burlesque performance. It's more like, it. I mean, it is mo more of an arty thing to me. Like, it's, I remember it's, when I was filming it and I sat down and I saw the. It wasn't Sandwich. It was another host that was there, but. Mm -hmm. Those old costumes that have had perfume sprayed on them dozens and dozens of yeah. times. Like wrestling costumes, it's very similar uh, smell to them. If you go and see a, a really, really old timer guy who's doing badly at a local show, which I saw a bushwhacker yeah. in his same '80s gear, it has the same kind of like, blah, like antique mall kind of smell. 
I remember smelling that when she walked past me, and right when she walked past me and I had that like scent hit me, I was like, you know, this this isn't going to be different at all. This is going to be right up my alley. This is going to be cheesy and corny and dirty and fucking great. Like, this is going to be just the ultimate uh, Americana in a way. Like, that's really how I felt yeah. when I was sitting there and I smelled that costume. It was just like, whoa. Like, I was like, <laughs> I was into it from that point. But, could, um, could you describe that smell? Well, it was kind of like I said, like, like uh, an old just moldy kind of smell. Like an, it was like an antique mall meets uh, perfume sprayed on it dozens and dozens oh, of okay. times. So it smelled years. like an old lady. Wow, that's awful. Like, <laughs> I guess you could say that. <laughs> I guess you could say that. I don't know. All right, number three. <laughs> yeah. Um... <laughs> Oh, now I, I well, want to backtrack like we now. Were, yeah, well, well, we were talking about, you were talking about visual arts, and I derailed you. Yeah, you, that is true. But, um, <clears throat> what, like, uh, when, we, when, when you define visual arts, what would that be like? I mean, visual as opposed to performing, uh, I would say is really more when I, where I'm focused at. Uh, I mean, not that I don't appreciate performing arts, it's just not uh, something that I'm active in. Um, <clears throat> I definitely, I would say I'm a, a supporter of most performing arts. You're a um, performance artist now. Low this... five? What? Loud enough I... to hear on the mic? I don't know, like that's... Loud enough to hear on the mic, come on, hit <laughs> Yeah! <laughs> um, that, I don't know. I don't really think about that. The thing about this is performing. I mean, performance, is, performance usually means you have an audience directly in front of you. Sort of, but this is on. This is on there forever now. Like this will be on. Uh, Does anybody listen to this though? Oh uh, well, we've got about five or six solid wow. people that actually listen to the show, yeah, and, <laughs> and and keep up on it. And there's a lot of people that find it, and maybe they don't watch another yeah. episode. But I mean, there's certainly, you know, each episode will get about fifteen views or so yeah. tops, and then yeah. there's a few that have about 35, 40, wow. which is kind of weird. But um, that was back when we used to tag things, too, because we used to just sit and go current events. Those were the first, like, three shows. I thought you were going to say the most popular ones were the ones where you just, like, got, went down and blew each other. <clears throat> Something crazy well, happened. Now, that would be a good show. Yeah? <laughs> those those we don't air. Those oh, are just okay. for us. <laughs> <laughs> like, you get special privilege to those, but gotcha. the, the listeners, yeah, gotcha. they don't We'll show them to you, but okay. not, not, okay. not them. <clears throat> but, and uh, it's just audio, right? Yeah, it's just... Right. Yeah, it's just audio. Well, there's some dirty talk, too. Right, right. Like, Bobby will go, suck my dick, bitch. <laughs> suck right. my dick, bitch. Like, he'll do that. He'll Your mouth looks it. like a little pussy with that mustache. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's, that's uh, not the first time you said that to me. But it, Today? Like, today. <laughs> no, dude, he just got up. Yeah. Yeah. He probably said it into the mirror, thinking about coming over to see me. But I didn't hear him. Can't wait to see Drew in that little pussy mouth. <laughs> <laughs> what were we talking about? I'm uh, I don't fucking know. Um, getting all these compliments. I just oh, like visual, arts. visual versus performing <laughs> arts. Yeah. Um, yeah, I would like. I would say, as far as actually doing work, um, when I do, uh, I'm. I draw, which, you know, like most people, I dance, did since I was a kid. Um, those of us who still do it, it's just, yeah, we just kind of didn't stop. Um, but, um, I like working in charcoal a lot. Uh, no kidding. Lately I've, been, lately I've played around, I, I haven't done so much charcoal lately, and I've been playing around with more with... Uh, <coughs> See, that I find really, really interesting. Water-soluble uh, graphite. Like, I bought charcoals off of a friend of mine. I love the way charcoal's done. Yeah. Like, yeah. It's it's a very very if you're if you pick the right thing to draw with it. Yeah. You have to pick a gloomy kind of a thing. You know what I mean? Or like an that. old like okay, a friend of mine drew a Groucho Marx charcoal form. Yeah. Groucho was only filmed in black and white. It yeah. was a great idea. Right. You know, like that uh certain things like that, but I mean you couldn't do like a landscape, I don't think, for example, or like an ocean shot in charcoal that would impress sure me a lot. Oh, that would impress you? Well, none that I that I've. I seen mean, what if what if there was some seen. what if there was some abstraction in it? Well, I suppose that would be pretty sweet. But See, I mean, I, I I'm not I've seen it done. I'm not well. I mean, I, you know, getting back to the way you phrase that, like, I don't know if there are many 
many landscapes, period, that would impress me, because it just, uh, I don't really give a shit. I like, guess that was a bad example. <laughs> yeah, that's how a politician um, would word that. Trees don't give you wood? <clears throat> no, Do no, nothing for you? Not really, not really. Not unless there's, like, you know, the, so my... you don't like Bob Ross? Is that what you're saying to me? Oh, shit, no, son. Dude, Bob Ross is awesome. I mean, as a person, sure, he was yeah. great, but... Well, it's kind of interesting. I'm pretty he sure he's God. I mean, he could do a lot in just a moment. Yeah, I mean, does. it's the the I, I would, the appeal of Bob Ross was really more about the process, and the final you know the finished product is kind of well, all right. That's you know. Yeah, it's hotel art. Yeah, sure. exactly, exactly. Something <laughs> something your grandma would want to hang over the couch. Hotel art, antique mall art. Yeah, yeah. That's good. Um, where do you think they get them? <laughs> no shit. <laughs> Every Bob Ross painting was donated to an antique mall in Illinois. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> and they just recycle them in and out of hotels. <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, where the fuck was I going with that? Yeah, landscapes. Mm, yeah, landscapes. I don't really, I don't really give a shit. Unless, like my my thing, even you know, taking art history classes in college, like I can't really get interested in in a landscape and unless there's some evidence of of human life within it like if you should like i i need some something to give me like uh an a perception of scale mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. like you can show me a countryside and I'm, oh okay whatever i it, it's just kind of meaningless to me but then if that if there's like you know a cottage in the distance i go oh okay well i can you know i can i i know how how big that cottage should be in relation to me. I can get some perception of you know depth you can and distance. To it. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. Um, but otherwise, yeah, fuck a landscape. For sure. <laughs> um, and Would you ever draw Batman in charcoal? Would I? Would you? What? I mean, I guess maybe. Are you a comic book fan? Not hugely. Um, yeah, let's move into pop culture. Like, what are you uh, into pop culturally that uh, retains your interest in drawing? Like, what do you... Have you ever drawn uh, you heroes? You draw hentai? No. no. I played around with... I played around with... Uh... You might get that vibe from him, but he doesn't give a shit about no hentai. You're right? <laughs> I mean, I played I around... I ask anybody who draws if they draw hentai. Do you really? Yeah. Chris will draw some hentai all day. <laughs> you don't even know. That dude can draw some hentai. Really? Yeah, dude. Yeah. We, uh, we had a contest. Uh, there's a friend of ours, can't drop names, but uh, it was, uh, we, uh, we, we had a contest of who could draw the funniest picture of him. Mm -hmm. And uh, Chris drew a hentai version, which was <laughs> hands down the funniest fucking version of this uh, friend of ours. But <laughs> anyway, I'm sorry no, that's fine. to derail, but what were you saying? <clears throat> I mean, I played around with, uh, with anime a little bit, like way back how long, how long ago was that? Probably, I don't know, probably early to mid-teens. But this was, at like, you know, in the mid-90s mid or so. Like, before before the web was a big thing. And, like, you know, before every fucking bookstore had a how-to-draw anime book. Or yeah. five or eight dozen. Yeah, I suppose you're right. And, uh, like, I had, you know, I had just seen a couple... Uh, examples of things here and there and I was like oh that's kind of cool like you know I kind of dug the style and like what else have you drawn facial now? facial features particularly I got really absorbed into like you know drawing anime faces in particular like like there's something really appealed to me about like the big glossy eyes with like the Pac-Man looking pupils and shit okay um, so I did that for a little while when I was younger but I, I haven't really gone back on that um are there any things like from pop culture that like you draw for fun or something like that or when you draw for fun do you draw something or do you draw abstract like, um honestly if you know I, I was doing a little bit of shit for fun last night because it's just because of the the demands of the fucking you know grind work schedule I've been dealing with here lately like I haven't had a lot of time to draw for fun and you know, even prior to that, when I was not working, like, it was really hard for me to even, you know, get... I just didn't even feel, like, the the push to really do anything, because I was just, like, overwhelmed with uh, anxiety as far as, you know, whether or not I was going to be able to pay my damn bills and whatnot. So it was hard to even really, like, relax and do anything. 
I mean, the but the one thing, like it's the 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 the, uh, the exemption. Or what is it? I don't, the the exception there rather is uh, I've pretty steadily gone to the burlesque and sketch events uh, in St. Louis at the Handlebar, which used to be twice a month. Now they're every. Uh, it's like the first Tuesday of every month, but um, you know, again, it, you know. Get, getting back into the burlesque, it's, it, you know, it's, it's basically, uh, a lot of times it's uh, newer performers or sometimes established performers who are just trying out new shit. It's kind of, I mean, it's, it's kind of like an open mic for, for uh, burlesque, um, but people get in touch with, uh, with uh, Tia, the woman who organizes it, and, you know, there'll be two performers and they'll, you know, They'll do a, uh, they'll do a number, and then they stand on a box for ten minutes and pose, you know, while so we that's sketch like them. That's what their payment is, I guess. Like if they stand on a box and pose, they do it. So. I mean, yeah, we well, we I mean they they're ba they're paid in tips for that, so they basically okay. send around a box for collections. All right. Um, but that's kind of been the one thing that I've you know consistently because I mean I always liked figure figure drawing when I was in school. Um, and it's, you know, there are opportunities here, uh, out here, but it's, a lot of them cost money, and that's, like, one of the few things that you can get into for, you know, nothing, and, you know, as long as you kick in a few bucks for, for tip, you know, you're, you're good, hmm. but, um. So, uh, what are you planning on for the cold meal logo? Um, Let's talk well, about that on our podcast, right? Yeah. All right. You want to do that? You want to talk business? Let's <coughs> talk business on our podcast. We'll have the meeting right here. All right. Dude, we're not giving you any more than four bucks. Oh, fuck. Yeah. How it's good? Just, just a really small logo. <laughs> <laughs> it might even be more work than like, if it was bigger. Yeah. But uh, yeah, what's uh, what? What do you have in mind for the Cold Meal Productions logo? Um, well, I know uh, when you first brought this up to me at work, um, you you straight. I mean, and this is this is another kind of funny thing about you know how sometimes clients will come to you and they they think they know straight up what they need, um, and you basically said, "I want a drawing of ice cubes on a plate." <laughs> and I was like, what? Doesn't that sound like me? I think I know exactly what I need. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's every day with you. That is, dude. Every day. Every day. I'm like, you know what needs to happen? And I'm just like, no, man. Let's just play hockey. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> He's so right about that. And then we play hockey and we have a good time. Do That's we not? That's true. That's true. But, uh... Have you ever played hockey, Archer? Have I ever played hockey? Like video games, yeah. Probably. Have you ever wasted a day that you set aside for work to play a hockey video game? No, no. I it's been about so the trades you make. It's been and dude, I <laughs> what was it? What was the first hockey game on NES? That's probably what I played. Blades of Steel. Yeah, there you go. There you go. That's I played some blades, <laughs> blades of Steel way back. Um. So yeah, there are no. No names that were easily recognizable. Maybe not even actual team names. I don't Man. know how that went. Yeah, well, it's crazy. Yeah. Such is life. Anywho. Yeah, uh, so. So I was a guy. How that, do you feel about video games as an art form? Um. Well, that's getting way off the Cold Meal logo. You know, <laughs> which one do you I don't want to talk about the Cold Meal. Would you rather have I kind of want to be surprised. I think that's a good question. So I think we should just put. Well, maybe get back to Cold Meal. Okay. Don't you think that's a good question? Yeah, that's fine. Um. Or which one do you want to answer? I don't. I'm asking you. We can go either way, man. You're the guest. Guest choice. Let's. Uh, you gonna enjoy them Pringles? We can yeah, set. Dude. We can set. Uh, set them aside for a minute. He popped them. Did you ever pop them? Once you pop, yeah. you just can't stop. <laughs> Did you like some? Uh, I'm good for right now, thanks. Bro? No, I want him to answer this question. Um. Video games as an art form. Um, I don't have any problem with video games. Um, I really haven't played a lot in a long time. Um, you know, the last time, let's see. Here, here. Let me, let me, let me go ahead and just give you a, a brief history of my involvement with video games. Oh, you're gonna be great. 
Um, when I was probably about four or five, uh, my older brother, who's seven years older than me, uh, had an NES. And are you the middle child? I'm the youngest of four. Okay. If you don't mind me asking, how old yeah. are you? Thirty-three. Thirty-three. Yeah. Okay. Thirty-three, dude. He's probably a mason. <laughs> um, How do you feel about the Illuminati as an art form? <laughs> okay, video games. Yeah, video games. Um, that's so good. <laughs> I, uh, so, um, being, you know, my, my older brother was not like the cool older brother. He was more just like the dickhead, like, it, it, you don't mess with my stuff, yeah. older brother. <laughs> like uh, me. I guess. I don't know what your, your situation is there, but yeah, he was more like, uh, you know, kept, kept the NES in his room and, you know, you're not allowed to fucking mess with it, whatever. I'm not here using it, granted, but damned if you're going to fucking do anything with it. Well, my brother would break my shit and lose oh, yeah. my shit. So I, it was out of necessity. Mm. It was... RJ lost the red brush, I understand. <laughs> <laughs> wow. I know, right? Why not? Nobody listens to this. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, yeah. Anyway, so, um... Uh, eventually he got a uh, Super NES. And, uh, I mean, I, was, I would always, you know, go into his room when he was gone and play his shit anyway. Um, and then eventually he got a Super NES, and the NES was just mine then, basically. Nice. Um, and I got a f handful of games of my own, like uh, those first two Simpsons games, Bart vs. the Space Newtons, and what the hell was the other one? Bart vs. the World. Got really into those. And nice, uh, nice. <laughs> You were into Sonic, too, right? Well, that's yeah. That's later on. Oh. Yeah, that's Genesis. That's too. another. That's, a, that's a whole other system, I'm man. I'm sorry. You gotta wait. I'm sorry. Um, and then press the uh, pause button, dude. Yeah, I am doing what I can over here to wait. And uh, Time Lord, which is f a bizarre fucking title that I don't think most people even know. No, it has nothing to do with Doctor Who. Um, <clears throat> it's just this kind of a fucked up concept game, but it's I don't know. I I. I you know, I think I told you, Drew, like, when we were in here, we were playing, uh, playing NES, uh, uh, what's the word? Mario? Emulators? Yeah, we were playing emulators here one night. <clears throat> and, Mario? Um, <laughs> yeah, a little bit of that. <clears throat> like, I don't think I was ever really good at video games. Um, like, really get into stuff, I was like, oh, you know, there's a lot of shit that I never really beat at all. Like, I would get maybe a level or two in and then just kind of give up. I get I got that way too when I was when I was younger like I wouldn't beat a game because I got I get to a certain point that I just couldn't I just couldn't do it yeah and I'm yeah. like wow a lot of these games I haven't even actually played all the way through yeah and yeah. I go back and dominate them <laughs> the way my brother words it because my brother's a big gamer he goes back and he'll play a game go remember that and I'll be like yeah and he'll go I beat it <laughs> turns out we were just little kids and we were fucking retarded but it's really not all that hard <laughs> like you got my brother. Uh, that's how he referred to uh, the torture scene in the first Metal Gear. Yeah. When I was a kid, I could not get past that shit. Oh, when yeah. I was like 14, 15 years old, like Castlevania Lament of Innocence came out, and I was so excited for that. And it was hard. I wasn't used to it. I was just used to going around in like 2D platforming, yeah. hitting bricks and getting chicken legs, dude. So you couldn't handle it? I couldn't handle it. But then I, like, I went back, and it's actually a pretty fun game. Just blew you away. Just blew me away. <laughs> I wasn't ready for it. Where were you at? Um, NES and finishing up that. So yeah, then uh, a few years later, when the hell was that about? Probably my, I guess, tweens or so, I uh, talked my parents into getting me a, uh, a Genesis. And uh, one of my favorite systems, by the way. Yeah, they came with that was that was right when they launched the Genesis Two, uh, as far as the actual model or what have you, which was basically just a different case design. And Sonic Two was the uh, was the bundle game. I think I got that one too. Yeah. And uh, played the hell out of that, and I beat that a few times just because for a long time it was about the only thing that I had. 
I don't know what the hell other games I beat. I never beat Sonic. I yeah. never beat the Sonic game. I beat Sonic, dude. Yeah. I was, Those I games was, are hard, man. I know, but I was like <laughs> real into Sonic. I, I, like my whole thing though is if it gets too hard, I don't care anymore. Yeah. Yeah, yeah dude, I like Mario to 3, I fucking love Mario 3. As soon as it gets to like level 5, the ice level, I'm like, fuck this, man. Fuck <laughs> this. Who's got time for that? Did you play Mario 64? No. No? No. no. You, I tried to it play probably it. would have driven you nuts. Yeah, I tried to play it at first, and uh, I, I really, I was like, this is too much. I can't do it. Mm. I can't do it. But yeah, that's like the best Mario game ever. <laughs> yeah, that's what everybody says. I just can't do it. You should go back. Do you have N64 emulators or an N64? Uh, I think Chris does, yeah. Okay, you should... You have to play it with a GameCube controller, though. That's not cool. I've never done that, but... Yeah. Like, I can beat Star Fox with a GameCube controller. You know how hard that fucking... You know how fucking hard that is to do? No, I don't. I've never... You have I to never fucking, had a GameCube. You have to break with your thumb, shoot with your index finger, do something else. Like, drop bombs with your middle finger and steer with your left. That's how the controller's built. Because they didn't think you'd be playing Star Fox on it when they built it. <laughs> but the emulator, that's what you gotta do to beat it. You gotta be like... Ugh! I was never a fan of those GameCube controllers. Jesus that. Christ. It's harder to beat Star Fox with a GameCube controller than it is to get me off. I'm telling you. Is it hard for you to get off? With all them fingers, you bet. Yeah. <laughs> I thought the I, I would have thought the more fingers, the easier it would have been. Are you kidding me? No. What about you? Is it more fingers or less fingers get you off? Uh, I'm thinking less, right? Uh, it varies. <laughs> Depends on the day of the week. How you feeling tonight after Maria Bamford about fingers? I... D I I'm not sure how fingers play into that. I'm Me mean, neither. Like... I just wanted to segue somehow. Oh, okay. okay. You so... just want to finger Maria Bamford. Oh, let's not say that. <laughs> Come on, I have respect for her. Let's not say that. That's awful. There are a lot of women that I have respect for that I want to finger bang. Yeah, but you can't say it. I'd like to go on the record, Maria, as to saying I would never say that about you. On my podcast for a cheap laugh, never. Tell her I wouldn't, RJ. It's very admirable. What, did I? Yeah, that you just said that. Really? Yeah. You really think so? Wait, what did you say again? <laughs> well, I was trying to say... He was like, she's classy. You, you don't make fun of her. Yeah, that's, that's my cool. girl. Yeah. <laughs> you, you stuck up for yeah, her. Yeah, that's her. I, guess I, I, had a, I had to second guess myself when you, like... You yeah. white-knighted that I guess shit. I, did. I guess I did. Backed yeah. up. I kind of uh, I went Blake Smith on that. And stuck up. Big time. White-knighted it. All the way. Ram with the touchdown pass. T.J. Oshie, American hero. <laughs> with T.J. Oshie, American hero on it. Ugh. God, it was a good show, though. Yeah, it was. So you, you, that's what you went and did with your night? Hmm? That's what you did with your night? You went to a Maria Bamford show? Yeah, yeah. Me and RJ uh, just got back uh, about... RJ and I. <laughs> RJ and I... Just got back, uh, honestly, we started this podcast up like no longer, like probably about an hour, 15 minutes or so after the show ended, mm -hmm. tops. So, I mean, yeah, we literally just got done with that. Great show. Absolutely. So you're still coming off that high. A little bit, yeah. Yeah. That's why, uh, I, that's why whenever, like, earlier, whenever he was just talking, I was, like, I was so down with it. I was just like, man. It's like, it's like I never left the place. <laughs> it's like I get to listen to someone speak. You know what I mean? Yeah. I'm, like, still in that mode. It's great. It's a great mood to do a podcast in. It was, uh, mm -hmm. it was an awesome fucking show, too. Tell us about the show. She, uh, well, I don't know. Should we start revealing material and shit? No, not a material. Just, like, the atmosphere. Where was it? This was at the Funny Bone in... Uh, Maryland Heights? Yeah, it's technically where Maryland Heights. It's at the uh, Westport Plaza, which is kind of a uh, planned outdoor, indoor slash uh, entertainment, partially shopping. I think it's mostly entertainment and restaurant mm -hmm. district kind of situation. But, you yeah. know. But a lot of people in there. Like, we mm -hmm. got sat down when we went in there with a, a couple and a guy we didn't even know. Yeah. And uh, we were like, like seriously, the table was probably like this big compared to this table. Like, about as wide as a large pizza. 
was about how not the box, just the pizza itself. It was about how big the so table like, was. So like like fourteen inches. Yeah, yeah, roughly. So it, it it was a real small table. It had a candle on it, which was even more dangerous to me when I saw that. And mm. then we're all supposed to like like me and RJ are big boys. This guy was an even bigger boy. And then there's a couple that want to like be close, and it was like we all had to share this fucking table. It's pretty. Yeah. Uh, Pretty, uh, I don't know, how'd you feel about that right when you walked in? I was like, this is going to be awful. I mean, I didn't, you know, <laughs> I, I had been there, I, it was kind of the same situation that we went up and saw Brian Posehn, so it was, I wasn't too uh, surprised by it. Uh, yeah, I, that took me off, like, or uh, took me off guard, because yeah. I was just like, what the fuck, this is going to be terrible. Did anybody order food? And make no, it really that would have been terrible. Yeah. Jesus Christ. There was people ordering fried chicken, like, all night, though. I kept smelling it. Yeah. Like, who the fuck's going to see Maria Bamford ordering a bucket of chicken? <laughs> you see, I, I don't like, I don't like that they serve food at comedy shows. It, I think it really distracts you from what's going on. Dude, I got distracted because of the waitress during like the second to last of Maria's fucking set. Like, her second to last bit, she was like, uh, probably like two minutes into it, and I got so distracted by the waitress because the waitress comes up and like, puts a receipt down, and then like. Like, 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 just like a minute later, waitress comes back and takes a credit card and looks at me and then walks away after, like, looking at the receipt, looking at me, walking away. So then me and RJ are both like, oh, shit, we gotta pay. And we both had to, like, sit there with an iPhone flashlight and look at a receipt and figure out who bought what and fucking, fucking blah, 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 fucking bullshit. Maria's up there, about to fucking leave the stage. Can't they fucking figure out a goddamn way to where I can take this fucking receipt to the bar and say, hey, do you see this receipt? I'd like to give you money for the beer that I drank while watching Maria Bamford. Thanks for not interrupting the show, by the way, sir. Like, don't they, can't they get a system like that going? Like, what the fuck is the matter with them? Next time I go, I'm not drinking. It's disrespectful. It's completely, don't you agree? Don't you agree that was a little dog? Maybe I'm enraging it a little bit for dramatic <laughs> effect because we need a dynamic show. But forget I said that. Don't you think it's a little fucking ridiculous? It's it's a hassle for sure. Yeah, yeah that was awful. That was just, uh, so that really took me out of it. But my God, she is, uh, she's in stellar shape, dude. She just got engaged. Yeah. And she's just like, you need to see it. She's happier. Like I Anybody... said, she did, she did like two minutes of fart noises on stage. <laughs> like for real, like two fucking minutes of fart noises. Did she marry, like, anybody, like, famous? I have no fucking idea. Like, another comedian? Well, she's just engaged right now. Yeah. She actually asked that she was doing crowd work. This probably won't hurt her, like, you know, by revealing anything. But, like, she did crowd work, and she asked a couple, so I just got engaged. What's your name? Oh, cool. So I just got engaged. Any advice for me? And, uh, well, she, she asked she asked them how long they'd been together. Yeah, and they said... And they're, like, three years. And she goes, oh, do you have any, uh, do you have any advice for newly coupled people? Yeah, they're like, yeah, don't get, yeah, they're like, the, yeah, they're like, don't get engaged. Yeah, they told her, they go, don't get engaged. And she did this whole bit of, like, looking at her finger going, ah! And, like, doing different, like, funny screams and shit. And she was like, the deed has been done. <laughs> she, it was, it was great. But she, uh, yeah, that was some really good crowd work, dude. That was funny mm -hmm. as fuck. <laughs> she was just, she was on it. And then uh, when, uh, well, do you, do you have anything you'd like to say about the show? Who was that girl before her? Oh, uh, Jackie Cation. Yeah, I've never seen her before. She fucking lit it up, dude. She walked in there. When she was in there killing, like seriously killing within like 40 seconds of being on stage, I thought in my head, me and Bob have no chance. Yeah, dude, we suck. We're never going dude, to. Dude, our dads are funnier than we are. Yeah, our dads are way funnier than we are. We have no chance. We're done. We're not funny. We're not. I was watching. I was like, we're not fucking funny. That that's that's why R J didn't laugh at at uh at the Stone we were, Cold interview. Yeah, yeah, because like he was just like that's because Stone Cold. It's not, not Maria funny. Bamford, dude. <laughs> yeah, that's because when we interviewed Stone Cold, he wasn't on that day. Stone Cold had an off day. Yeah, he really did. I think he had a cold or something. Maybe. What? But uh, Maria, man, uh, you guys don't even, shouldn't be so hard on yourselves. You just gotta keep keep at it. No, well, fuck you. that. We're quitting, dude. Oh, <laughs> oh all right. Well, Bobby, got, Bobby just bought Half Life, uh, the box set. So not Half Life. Or what the fuck Mass is, Effect. Mass Effect. Whatever. Who gives a shit? Bought Nobody the trilogy. Cares. Yeah. So he he's done. Oh. Yeah, dude. It's over. RJ's talking to me about doing a little acting. Oh yeah. Yeah. Well, he yeah. actually said, like, what, I want to work on something. He's a good-looking guy. 
You think so? I think we should get them on camera. Hmm. You, you Look are. at that shirt. What is that? Express? You know, it's not a dress. Van Heusen. Van Heusen. Do you really right. think so? Yeah. I don't. I don't want to. I don't want to. Um, <laughs> I don't want to disappoint you though. Will you get naked? Just na um, what, under what context? <laughs> like real artsy stuff. Don't. We? <laughs> <laughs> like, we're not gonna let. We're gonna. We're not gonna make you do anything. You're. I, I, I'd have with. to think about it. Um, uh, shit. But I just. I just want you to know up front. <laughs> so you're not disappointed. That, you know. You you pointed out my my shirt. This is uh, kind of a personal uniform. And anytime you see me that I'm not at work, mm -hmm. this is what I'm going to be dressed in. Okay. This, like, I always dress like this. It just it's it's something I settled on a couple couple years ago, and it's I, I actually used to wear white shirts until I realized they were too much of a pain in the ass to keep clean. Yeah. So it's always black denim and a uh, kind of gray. Uh, I prefer a uh, uh, goddamn not pop. Yeah, it is a. Uh, Poplin, uh, fuck, what is the word even? Help me out, what are, what are uh, shirt weaves? Know. Weaves, like, uh, shirt weaves? not broadcloth. God damn. <laughs> uh, anyway, what Robbie, the hell is this? Start naming off some shirt weaves for us. Uh, a double knit. No. <laughs> no, it's, uh, uh, triple knit. Fuck, I can't remember what it's called. Um, I'll remember it later. Anyway. It's, uh, th this is generally what I always wear. And it's... Is there a reason for it? Um, a lot of, like, you know, I don't like shopping for clothes that much, so I just decided to sell on have a bunch of those? Thing. Yeah, kind of. Yeah. Are you serious? Yeah. That's pretty... Are you fucking... pretty cool. Do you do the Albert Einstein thing? Are you fucking What's kidding me? What's that? You, Eric, you're gonna sit here right now on our podcast and act like you don't know about the Albert Einstein wearing the same suit every fucking day because he thought that it was a waste of time to think about what you're going to wear so find a suit you like and buy all the same suit. Oh. If you were to open I've up never... his closet you would see all the same suits lined up. You know, honestly, if Did I you have know to... that? The same no. thing goes for like You're going to sit here and say too, you didn't know that. I didn't know Albert. that. No. Okay, Albert Einstein Usually, usually when I usually when I bring it up, uh, the the people always want to go to like Steve Jobs as a, as a reference point. Which what, he did that too? Really? Did you not? Did you not keep up with uh, any? Like, see anything that he did in the last? I don't give a he, fuck about him. I'll be honest. When he basically, <laughs> at, I don't do know. So, at, at some time, <laughs> at some point before he returned to Apple, in like ninety, what was it, ninety seven, ninety eight, ninety nine, somewhere around there, when right before they launched the uh, the iMac, um, he started wearing only. He was always wearing uh, blue jeans, and a. Um, what the hell is it? There's a, it's a, Ch a Japanese designer, like Mi Miyaki, is it? Some, I don't know. It was always like the same black uh, mock turtleneck shirt. So what? He, and he did the same thing. Yeah, yeah. It was the same thing. But I mean that. Well, Einstein did that too. Okay. Well, that's fine. That's a lot of people insane do. to me. But yeah, usually, usually when I, I mention that. Did people, you know oh, that Steve Jobs did it when you did it? I was aware of it, but like. I'd heard the thing was I had heard. Uh, I'd be more impressed if you did it because Einstein did. It. I had heard it. Well, I mean, that, I, I wouldn't. I don't know that. I don't know that I would say that Jobs was really the influence, but like, I had heard a uh, of a story. Probably listening to fucking NPR. I don't know. They mentioned there was some uh, some study that, and I think in the context of the story, they were t saying that Obama had cited it or some point because he was he's kind of he's, he was doing a similar thing. Um, but they said basically, the the more you can reduce the decisions you have to make, mm -hmm. like the easier it is to make decisions that you actually have to make. Like you have a certain there's a certain like threshold for decision making mm -hmm. within your day to day routine, and so the more you can reduce things to just like routine, um, and that's just what you're going to do every all the time. Like the better you'll, you'll the more prepared you'll be when you have like legitimate decisions to make. But if I want to be honest and, you know, kind of go back a little bit, you know, I think maybe George Jetson was like a style icon, you know? Do you really think so? Maybe, maybe. Green pen there, was, there, was always something, there was always something cool to me about, like, cartoon characters wearing the same shit all the time. 
We got I, into a we got into a mini argument. Yeah. Bob, why don't you lay down that argument? I didn't like that everybody wore the same thing all the time. I thought <laughs> yeah. they should change, and I didn't like that they didn't it was age. For, it was for the next Vinny and Lou. Oh, I yeah. said, we need to wear the same thing, Bob. You can't wear that green shirt. And he was like, no, dude, I don't want to wear the green shirt. No, dude, I brought this hat so in this jacket so I can wear the green shirt. No, I'm wearing the green shirt. I was like, no, dude, because we have to be like cartoon characters. People need to see us the same way every time. That's what's funny about it. Like, these guys are always doing the same old shit. Yeah. We should be wearing the same old shit. And he was like, no, dude, no, no. I hate the cartoon characters do that. And I go, come on. Tell me what you said. I hate it. I always thought that was stupid. Change your fucking clothes. Yeah, That's dude. what you were saying. And, uh, and the age, too. I didn't like that nobody aged. You don't like that? No. It's great. It's a great world to escape to. I don't know, man. Like, they even address it in some cartoons, and that makes well, me yeah. mad, too. Like, Family Guy, where they're like... I, I can't remember what episode it was. Oh, where he talks about how Connie's been pregnant for like six years? Yeah, yeah. They are, like that, or like like a whole season has gone by and that's only supposed to be like within the span of like a couple days or like an hour or two, and they address that, and I, I don't know. I just didn't like it. Well, <laughs> he's trying to lump in what you love with what you hate. <laughs> he's trying to say that, yeah. Yeah. I don't know. Um, Cause he hates Family Guy. We hate Family Guy. Yeah. <laughs> Family Guy sucks. Yeah, not a fan. Can we all just rant? Can we all just do a shoot? Do a shoot on Family Guy. Do a shoot? Yeah. Why don't we just talk about how great? Talk again about how great the critic is. The was. critic was a great. I love everything John Lovitz touches. You know. uh... He turned me on to that recently. I got all of those fucking uh, episodes now. We should watch those. Like, yeah, right so now. we should stop this show and watch them. Yeah, dude. Now, fuck that. Let's talk about the credit for a little bit. Let's put it over. RJ, shoot on well, the Well, I was just saying, like, you know, like I told you at work, I, the thing, one of the, you know, in hindsight at least, uh, the thing that I really loved about the critic is that they made a legitimate, they built a legitimate platform to make the kind of jokes that Family Guy makes. And it doesn't, like, take you out of the fucking story. Like, right. It's actually relevant to what's going on. Like, hey, here's a here's a preview from this blah, 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 movie. Here's a stupid joke. Then we're going to go right back to the story. And it all, like, there's... It's cohesive and relevant. It's not Better. just... Hey, this reminds me of that time I was... Blah, 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 blah. Cut. Back. Let's go back to the story that has nothing to do with what just ha fucking happened. Yeah. Especially whenever they cut to, like, a Star Wars sequence that goes on for, like, a minute and a half. Isn't yeah. annoying as shit? Or, like, when he fights the chicken. Yeah. yeah. Oh, my God. That's that was so, so off-putting the first time I saw that. But people love the chicken, dude. Yeah. They think it's, it's like fucking a, awesome. I don't get it. They think it's, like, the biggest deal ever. Yeah, I know. It, it's silly to me. Or when they killed the dog but didn't kill the dog, brought the dog back. Because of time the travel. They're doing time travel. Oh, dude. My fucking cousin. Wow, really? My cousin. Time tra Are you kidding me? Yeah, they're doing time. Stewie has a time machine. And then they just met the Simpsons. I didn't see that. Me neither. Did you? RJ didn't either. No, no. I heard let's about it. Let's all fucking. Let's all. Or wait, I guess Bobby's done with it. Me and I'm RJ done too. Oh well. We could just click glass for the shit of it. Well, no, that's stupid. <laughs> I'll be right back with some beers. I got. My, uh... I don't want any more beer. I got this Mountain Dew. What, are you serious? Yeah, I'm done drinking. Wow, what about you? I gotta go home I could take another one. All right. Well, I'll be right back, okay? You guys don't talk shit on me or nothing, okay? Okay. All right. <laughs> so, lately, like, Drew's been getting into incense, Yeah. I guess. Cause he's he's a fag. Oh or, yeah. Or something. Hmm. And like he gets the worst smelling incense. It's, it always smells like cat pee down here. Really? Yeah. I, I just I'm not a fan. Is that an incense scent? I guess. Huh. I I don't know what, what it's actually called, but it definitely smells like cat piss. If they labeled. I mean, it, I can see that being a thing. You know. I mean, a lot of those uh, crazy uh, hippie chicks that run head shops and you know, make slash sell uh, incense or into cats. Yeah. Um, so I could definitely see. Maybe they just smell like cat pee because they're made by people with too many fucking cats. Yeah, but there's other incense who, like, I feel like they're made by the same people. Oh, yeah. But they don't smell like cat pee. Hmm. 
like cinnamon roll incense. Like that's hmm. that's legit shit, dude. Why can't he get that? I don't know. Why does it? I think it's because he misses his cat. Oh yeah. Yeah. You have cats? You have animals? No, I don't. I don't. I would love to have me a fucking dog, but I don't live in a uh, in an apartment that permits animals of any kind. Mm -hmm. I always get so excited when I deliver to a uh, to a customer that has a dog, especially when it's a big dog, and then like they push their way out the door. Yeah. Like, oh, I get to touch it, get to pet a dog. Yeah. You have that experience, Drew? What's that? Delivering to a customer that has a dog, and the dog <laughs> squeezes his way out the door past their leg that's trying to. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And then and he they go, yeah, I get to pet a dog now. Yeah. Yeah. It's a good one. Absolutely. Bam bam. There's the dogs. <laughs> dogs. That's what all did you guys talk about when I was going? We talked about how your incense smells like cat pee, and I think it's because you miss your cat. Just like breaking it down psychologically. You think my incense smells like cat pee? Yeah. And you like that. And I like that. Because you, Because I miss my cat. Yeah. First of all, it's Nag Champa. Nag Champa. Yeah. Is that is that like Chinese for cat pee? <laughs> what is that Chinese for, RJ? You know. <laughs> I would uh, I would guess it's deri that's more of a uh, a Hindi word, I would think. Yeah, Bobby. Hindi word for cat pee. You dumb son of a bitch. No! What's a Hindu for, RJ? Smartphone. Come on, help me out, dude. Hindi, not Hindu. Hindu is a religion, Hindi is a language. Hey, there it is. School. School! <laughs> that was the first fucking school where's that, where, When's that soundboard coming? Yeah, where is the soundboard, school. Bobby? Get that, get that soundboard in here, Bobby. All right, dude, I'll work on it All right. later. As in not now. <laughs> Want some pretzel sticks? No, dude, those pretzels, they keep making me thirsty. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Well, I got beer. <laughs> I don't want any more beer. Man. And I don't want to drink all my Mountain Dew. If you'd have seen Maria Bamford, you'd need a few beers to chill the fuck out. Yes. Did you get you real hyped? I can't even explain it, you know. Like, I've seen her in high definition. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like the highest resolution, everything, on TV, doing her thing, doing it all perfect. But to see her in person, like, that was just unreal. Mm -hmm. Like, she is so... Like, how is she not... I, we, I asked him in the parking lot on the way home. I was like, how is she not, like, way bigger in her career? Like, what is up with that? Like, she is gorgeous. Yeah. You don't even know. Well, she, didn't in she do person, this? In person, dude, just wearing regular old fucking clothes and shit. It's just like, oh my god. Didn't she do, like, commercials for Target one year? Yeah, she did, but come on. Yeah, I mentioned that to him. and Well, she was one of the podcasts that she did, I heard her, she was describing that part of the reason she left that, or she was kind of had to leave that gig is because she was like uh like depressed and whatnot mm -hmm. like she became suicidal if i remember right doing christmas commercials well not suicidal from doing christmas <laughs> commercials i mean it's a it's a nice thought but um but yeah she had mental some mental illness issues and so she was forced to leave that gig that's not fun no not at all. that sucks you probably uh, you probably don't like to hear about that, about your angel having problems. Well, you know, at least I've dealt with crazy ones. I know how to string them along for a little bit. <laughs> oh, so I can't say that you want to finger her, but you can. Shh. You can't just you just can't say it on the show. She might hear it. But you're talking about how you're leading on crazy chicks. And... Yeah, but. That's not that specific. I don't know, man. What do you think, RJ? I think it's a little worse. 
You think he's blowing it for me right now with Maria Bamford? I, I think you're blowing it for yourself. For yourself dude. Really? <laughs> a little bit. Damn, right. dude. She was so good looking, though. You have no idea. It was unreal. Like, when we were walking out, she was like five feet away. Yeah. And I just kept, like, stopping and, like, staring at her. Why like, didn't you stop and meet her? Because we wanted to get the fuck out. GTFO. GTFO. That's what RJ said. He goes, you just trying to GTFO? And I'm staring at Maria, and I'm like, yeah. <laughs> you probably didn't I mean, if you wanted to wait in line, you could have said so. No, the thing was, is, like, when we got outside, I was telling RJ. I was like, dude, I, I in my head, I was ready to meet her, but I couldn't have fucking met her. Why not? Just looking at her, I couldn't have met her. There's no way. Fuck am I gonna say to Maria Bamford? I felt the same way. I was four beers, four blue moons deep, walking out, staring at her. She's like my height. I'm like, huh. I felt <laughs> it was uh I felt the same way the first time I met Melora Krieger. Who's that? The lead singer of and lead cellist of Rasputina. Oh yeah, you yeah. did tell me about this. Yeah. I got what the, the fuck are you gonna say? I got the vapors for sure. I made a complete ass of myself, but I wouldn't trade it for anything. <laughs> you didn't tell her that you loved her, did you? I didn't tell her that I loved her. I was just like, I was gushing though, for sure. Yeah, I couldn't have done it. It was like four beers in, she was standing right there meet her for free. Plus, I had a pocket full of money. I totally would have bought something just from talking to her. I know I would have. <laughs> I was like, he was like, you want a GTFO? And I was like, <laughs> I was like, yeah, dude. So I left with RJ instead of Maria Bamford. So I, think you, I think you made a good choice. <laughs> <laughs> like, he looks... He looks like Fabio kind of. Oh my god! <laughs> like there's definitely a Fabio vibe. Like I can, oh. like I can see him like, like you know on that a new unicorn. girl I told you about who started. She said the same thing. Yeah. Yeah. She said the same thing. She said Fabio with the Dude. hair down. Like if he were just like just. One of those girls there said Fabio with the hair down. Where? At work. Which one? I don't remember. Oh. Okay. And we can't drop names. What the fuck are you thinking? Oh, excuse me. You can't drop names. You gotta make up, like, a pseudonym. Why don't you have a tablet out here to write shit down? <laughs> <laughs> it's an RJ. This, that doesn't show to think like we're professional. That doesn't show yeah, up dude. on the track. Yeah, where, where'd this guy come from? Forget it. <laughs> yeah, forget it. Yeah, he's not even gonna bother with us He's now. gonna come in our house <laughs> telling us how to do our thing. You know the thing about him though is that's what he did. Tell him about the clipboard. Tell oh, everybody Christ. about the clipboard. Clipboard, clipboard, clipboard. I don't know if it's that impressive, but it's um... so impressive and it's so silly because he thinks of it as like you know, don't sell it short. You think it's you think you're like a bad motherfucker for No that. I don't! <laughs> yeah, you do, dude. No, I gotta hear it, dude. <laughs> so <laughs> you know one of the other drivers, uh I noticed um, some time back had a uh, had a little memo sized clipboard, and I asked him about it. He said, "Yeah, I use that for uh, credit card receipts." I'm like, oh, okay, now yeah, I'll get one. He's like, "Yeah, they're they're like less than a buck. You know, easy to pick up." I'm like, "Okay." So I got one, and right away I was like, "Well, I'm gonna want a uh, a pen holder on there of some kind." Yeah. And uh, so I found some at fucking Walmart and stuck one on. You see these little silicone pieces of shit, self-adhesive. And I used that for about a week, maybe a little longer. And then I had a stretch where I kept delivering to houses where, you know, customers like, oh, uh, sorry, I don't have a porch light that works right now with the bulbs out or blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. I'm like, fucking really, dude? Come on now. And so I was like, well... I would like to have my own light source with me for when that happens. <laughs> and while we're supposed to have a goddamn, you know, we're supposed to like be carrying a flashlight, like that's kind of ridiculous to like hand a, a clipboard to somebody and then hold a flashlight over them as they write. Yeah. So I was like, well, I'll just, I, I kind of <laughs> looked around. I was like, oh, I'll get a fucking book light and put that on there. So I did that and was using that for probably a good month and a half or so. 
until I uh, delivered to our uh, like regional uh, supervisor, uh, and he's he he was like so just blown away by it. he's like oh I really like this I go, oh yeah he's like yeah this is nice I go that's where it gets epic I go oh, okay yeah it's just, you know. He's just downplaying it. it so hard, dude. And he goes, he goes, he goes. Can you can you make me one of these? And I go, I yeah, I guess I can. I said I got to figure out where I got that book light from. He goes, actually, if you can get the parts, can you make me twenty of them? And I go, uh, well, actually, no, no. I got to backtrack. When he when he first asked me to make him one, I kind of chuckled it off, like I thought he was making a joke. And he goes, no, I'm serious. I'm gonna show the other guys. Oh, okay. I, I was like, you know, gotta figure out where I got that book. Like, actually, can you make me twenty? Okay. Um, and I go, yeah, just give me, give me some time, and I'll uh, get them together, or whatever. He's like, all right. And I'm like, all right. So I guess I gotta put together some fucking clipboards. <laughs> this guy. Which I mean, I'm cool Played with that. Played it down so hard, dude. It's not that big a deal. But at work, we've made it into a really big deal. Yeah, everybody right. else has made it into a big deal. I'm like, yeah, I got this. Because we're like, yeah, RJ, the fucking inventor. It's it's just great. Like, the other night... Uh, RGM uh, keeps riding my ass about it. Dude, so hard, dude. He's just, like, like so hard. Like, RJ knows what to do. He'll just take a clipboard, and he'll stick stuff to it, and he'll fix it. <laughs> <laughs> He's all like that. He's a dick. But, uh... Fucking, um, I got Dude, RJ. I guarantee you, like, three months from now, we're gonna see RJ on TV <laughs> on a show called Pimp My Clipboard. <laughs> <laughs> I'm bringing that, dude. I'm bringing that to work. RJ, Pimp My Clipboard. Jocks. Jock. There you go. Jock. Hey, yo, we heard you like clipboards. <laughs> so we stuck a clipboard on a clipboard. So you can clipboard while you're clipboarding? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> God damn. Strobe light. <laughs> PlayStation 4. 16 inch fold down TV. Yeah. No auxiliary battery. Aquarium. Why the fuck not? On your clipboard. <laughs> These fish should be dead in three days. But we don't care, it looks cool now. <laughs> yeah, dude. The thing though, too, is like. I would have. I wish I, I. I would have liked to have gotten them done sooner because that's been like. It's been a while. It's been about a, close to a month and a half now. Yeah. But the thing was, like, the day he he asked me for them, was like the day after I dropped my goddamn car on my foot, my ankle, and so I was dealing with all kinds of shit, you know, for that in like the the fo the following week or two, and. Uh, and I just had my own, you know, personal shit to deal with. And then, like, my schedule got fucking insane. And I really haven't had time the time to put into it that I want to. So now I'm like, oh, now I gotta do something special to, like, make it worth the fucking wait. So now I just gotta hold some shit. I'm gonna, I think, I'm gonna try to fucking screen print them. And, like, put, like, the fucking logo on them and all this other shit. Be like, yeah, I made you wait a long time, but aren't they extra cool now? Yeah, dude. Yeah. Dude, if they buy that idea off you, that could be that could be pretty fucking tight. I mean, I doubt I'm gonna get any money. He 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 told me he'd reimburse me for all my costs and shit, but I don't think they're gonna like you know give yeah. me anything awesome for it. But I keep thinking in the back of my mind, like I don't know if the the franchisee employs any designers, but I keep thinking like you know maybe if like I can get like a fucking side job or something with them, like designing flyers and bullshit, like that would be kind of cool. Yeah. Like I've been trying to push, push the GM to let me do a uh, a window splash for our reopening mm -hmm. at the end of the month. Because again, like I just like you know I, I did I kind of did one uh, when we had like a uh, a sale here a while back and that got a lot of attention. We had a lot of uh, walk-in customers who were like, oh, I like that window, and uh, it got a lot of you know a lot of people took notice of it. That's cool. And, uh, but the problem was I used, like, fucking, uh, you know, shitty window chalk pens, which, the thing about it was, like, if there was light hit, if there was a glare on the windows, mm -hmm. or it was nighttime, you couldn't see any of it. Yeah. 
Um, like it needed to be like acrylic paint or some shit, like something that was opaque. Um, Cause those things just weren't doing the job. But I have in my head that, you know, there's a way to do it that it'll look decent. I just gotta get somebody to, you know, okay it. But I keep, like I said, I keep thinking like maybe, maybe I can get some, some more, you know, legit work out of it. Yeah. Congratulations, dude. I'd be tired. I hope, it, I hope it works out. Yeah. So that's why we give him shit over the clipboard. So. Yeah. Yeah, dude. Because you know he's going to be famous one day. Yeah, exactly. He's going to leave all you assholes in the dust. Yeah, totally, exactly. That's why we're giving him shit about the clipboard. That's what it is to the max. Like, he's going to be, like, checking into, like, franchises all over the area, like, hey, Drew, I noticed you're not using your clipboard. <laughs> You see, we, we at Domino's really, really like it if you use the clipboard. Yeah. Like, we're not going to reprimand you if you don't. You should, not have, really, dropped, you should we not really have dropped that name, by the way. Oh, what what name? You know the one. The oh, we, word. We could edit it in post. No, actually, we can't because it's supposed to be a one take. What? Yeah. Explain. This is, you, this is all usually one take. Yeah. I'm not editing that out. You just shouldn't do it again. Are you not editing because you're lazy or... What? No. <laughs> because it's a podcast. You don't edit a fucking podcast. Everybody edits their podcasts. We're the only people who don't edit our podcasts. What are you talking about? Bill Burr does not edit his podcast. I'm pretty sure Bill Burr edits no, his podcast. No, he don't. That's the only one that I ever got into. <laughs> yeah. What? You upset about that? No, I'm just, I think it's, just think it's silly. Like... Oh, you think it's silly? Yeah, a little bit. I mean, it's, uh, we're, you know, an hour, 11 minutes right now. Yeah. I'm just gonna do the whole thing. Yeah. Yeah. And? Pete Holmes does two hours, dude, and he edits, so. <laughs> Are you serious? Yeah. Sometimes three, four hours, depending on if he likes the guest or not. Well, damn. Maybe you should learn how to edit. Maybe you should... I, I don't have a computer that can edit. Hmm. Maybe, uh... Maybe we'll figure out a way around that. What, what do you have as far as a computer? I don't even know. Oh, okay. It's old. Okay. Like, 06. Oh, yeah. That doesn't mean much. Um, Audacity is really good. Uh, and that's, like, free... Uh, open source. Mm -hmm. um, so it's free, and... It has relatively low... Uh, requirements as far as uh, system resources but it's pretty pretty uh, capable for what uh, audio editing what have you okay do noise removal and then just your standard cutting and whatnot um, sometimes uh, when I go to websites that have like video advertisements yeah my computer won't work really yeah, that's how bad it is. Well, like it, like the flash player crashes. Yeah, and I guess I gotta restart everything. I don't know. The, you you might try Audacity. It's not uh, like I said. I don't think it's that uh, demanding as far as because most open source um, most open source applications are kind of meant to run on systems with. Uh, Basically, you know, dirt cheap hardware, like thing that things that aren't, you know, totally new and things that are older or just, you know, uh, don't really have a lot of processing power. That or RAM or yeah. Usually, because basically, there's not there's there tends to be a little less uh, bloat as far as extra features and shit that just hogs memory and what have you. So yeah, okay, give it a shot. I'll it give might it a shot. Not. I'll let you know how it goes, Drew. And if it goes well, then I'll start. I'll, I'll start editing. What podcast? I can edit the podcast. Yeah. <laughs> the only reason they edit is because they have commercials. No, they don't have commercials. Not necessarily. The show. Dude, they get all the advertisements out of the way in the beginning of the show. Mm. Does all his tour dates, and then he goes into the show. Hmm. Kevin Smith has talked about, you know, like editing, editing Smodcast and the other podcasts he does were kind of what, what uh, drew him back into filmmaking. 
because he was at the point where he was ready to just retire from filmmaking and just do podcasts, but he said he, he enjoyed the process of editing so much and kind of like building the story in that way that it drew him back into filmmaking again. Well, I'll be damned. I didn't know anybody edited their podcast. Yeah. Yeah. It's common practice, Drew. Sorry. I mean, I could do it. Well, let's see how this goes, and I'll let you know, and then then I can do it. Oh, all right. Yeah, hopefully. Yeah. Fingers you crossed. You want to fight? Do I want to fight? Yeah. You? RJ. RJ? No, he'd smear me, dude. <laughs> <laughs> Like this guy, this guy looks like he could whoop some ass. Could you? Well, I, actually, he's never been in a fight. You've yeah. never been in a he fight. He refuses yeah. to fight. Pacifist. I mean, I'm just not the fighting type. Oh. He would never fight anybody. Right? Probably not. I mean, unless I felt like there was a good reason for it. Like there's a guy with a baby by its hair, and he's got a he's got a knife to its throat, and he's like, hey. I'm gonna kill this baby if you don't fight me. Hey, my baby. I don't care. <laughs> it's your baby. So you wouldn't fight him? I didn't procreate. <laughs> <laughs> Man. RJ's heel, dude. That, that's real heel. <laughs> Not saving a baby? Turn and fighting heel. Like, you don't even have to win the fight, you just have to fight. He's turning pacifism heel, dude. That's what he's doing. Man. There are too damn many babies in this world. I, I agree with that. We can that. suffer the loss of one. I agree with that. You know, Chris was talking to me about the Ebola virus. Yeah. Oh, Ebola! Sorry. Is that scary? Isn't that the uh, bump they play in the news? Backwards, real quietly, as the newscaster's talking to brainwash us all into being afraid of the Ebola virus? That's what they play, right? Dude, Shepard I, Smith was like on Fox News today. He's like, guys, don't freak out about Ebola. Like was this, he really? Yeah, he's like, dude, like news is people, sensationalizing this shit. It's not as bad as everybody thinks. Just calm down. It's fucking out of this world. People are freaking the fuck out about some Ebola, dude. And uh, I got to be honest with you. I'm going to say it on the podcast right now. We could really use like a... Uh, could really use something like that in this country, you know? I think that's the kind of hope and change that I can get behind. Ebola. All over the place. So you'd be cool with, like, getting Ebola? No, just everywhere. Like, you know, lucky. Like, you know, like, 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 all luck. It wouldn't are be so gonna, bad. Like, where you, did that shit start? Texas? That wouldn't be so bad. If Ebola started in Texas, that wouldn't be too bad. It's already in, like, Kansas City, though. Okay, well, fine. It's all about luck. Whoever wasn't around the Ebola. Well, I'm safe, we because I really... don't interact with anyone. Yeah, me neither. Well, actually, we interact with a lot of people, don't we? Yeah, yeah. dude, you guys go door-to-door -door interacting with people. Yeah, but I'm just saying, I like, sit on my ass and play like Mass this country effect. could really use something like that. Like, a virus that kills a lot of people. Open them freeways up, you know what I mean? But I mean, like, come on! Is nobody gonna fucking sell me? It on wouldn't that be idea? good. Like, are you guys gonna make me? It sit sounds here? like you've been sold on it. I don't think you. We well, need to I help. Mean, well, I mean, like, help me sell it. Like, no, everybody's gonna make <sighs> me stand here alone on it. It like, wouldn't. It wouldn't be good for like social diversity evolution, because like all the all the people who are gonna survive this thing are the shut-ins like me, who really shouldn't be passing on their genes. You know what I mean? Your it's mom a good point, get right? It. She works at a hotel. She could, but I don't really interact with my mom a whole lot. You're in the car with her, it's enough to get it. No, it's not, man. You gotta, like, touch bodily fluids. I'm not touching my mama's bodily fluids, dude. Are you serious? Yeah, it's not, it's not even airborne. They're making such a big deal out of it. You're making such a big deal. Right now, most of the people who are getting infected are medical professionals hmm. who are trying to help people. It's kind of a pisser. Yeah. Just saying, though, that'd be great, right? So you want to, like, purge the population? I'm saying, like, if the Ebola thing... Like, I don't want to, no. But if it happened, that'd be pretty... That wouldn't be so bad. 
Okay. Gotta admit, wouldn't be so bad. What if Whoopi Goldberg died from it? Then you'd be mad. I do love Whoopi Goldberg. Tell us what you do to that ass. <laughs> I'm not gonna get into that. She's a wonderful woman. Don't. Say you that went about into her. that like four don't, episodes ago. Don't 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 say that about her. She's a wonderful woman. You trippin', Drew. <laughs> <laughs> This is the new me, man. The white Knight. It's the new me. All of a sudden, Drew loves women. Went and saw Maria Bamford and that other 42-year-old bitch. Yeah. That was tight. Now he's got mad respect for bitches. I got mad respect for women. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, earlier this week... This is quite a change. This is, isn't it? I don't know what I'm gonna do. <laughs> Uh, earlier this week, I I, I uh, fell in love with whores, too. <laughs> Who? <laughs> fell in love with whores. Horus? No, not Horus. <laughs> not the Egyptian god of sun, Horus. That's Hor who I thought you were talking no, about. No, whores. 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 Ladies of the night. You can say that. Yeah. Again. But, yeah, and then I... And more recently, the daytime, too. I delivered to a biker party. A biker party in Collinsville. They're on South Morrison toward the ketchup bottle. Mm -hmm. And uh, I get is there. that information relevant? What is that information relevant? No, it's not. But he lives around here. I wanted to let him know where this yeah. biker party in Collinsville okay. was taking place. But anyway, a bunch of dudes. I would edit that out if I was editing. You don't want them to kick my ass, do you? I mean. I'm not you, so it doesn't matter so much to me if they kick your ass, but you know, for your own sake, you might want to. See, he cares about, about me. That's why he threw that out there. That's he doesn't care about you. He just doesn't want to have to, like, I don't want to have for you. He doesn't, you. Want yeah. to, he doesn't have to work more. Yeah. <laughs> That's what it yeah. is. Some bikers beat the shit out of me. You definitely, <laughs> yeah, you definitely have to close a little more. Oh, yeah. Oh. But, uh, so I delivered to this thing. And they're all wearing uh, they're all wearing the same vest. They're all standing outside chilling, and uh, they've got these women walking around, and they were fucking gorgeous, dude. Like the bustiest, most voluptuous women, with like the big long hair and everything. And they were all wearing the same Halloween costume, which I thought was really odd. And I kind of put it together in my head, leaving like these are all hookers. <laughs> Because there's no way they all got the same Halloween costume. It was all like mobster looking, but it was like really short, sh like shorts slash skirt. So these bikers thing. had hired like a strip club to like come for entertainment. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. Obviously. You yeah. pay them a little extra, and yeah, things happen. That was going on. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So uh, yeah, they were everywhere, and they were wearing like these uh, pinstripe short slash skirt type deals, yeah. and uh, like vests kind of. But they were wearing like no undershirt, no bra, or nothing. And they were just walking around that way, and the way they walked, and they were all in heels too. Yeah. And I was like, dude, these aren't like girlfriends. There's no way. Like that's what I was thinking, looking around. But then I go into the house, right? There's even more of them. Like everywhere you looked, there was one of them. Yeah. And then in every room of the house, there was like a different light show set up. Why the, are the you the pizza guy going to every single room of this house? That was my question. No, I wasn't going to every single room, but I crossed through like the living room area and saw like, you know, in the three of them through that hallway. And it was like different light shows in those three rooms with different stereos playing different music. Mm -hmm. And, uh... Was this Mark Whitehead's house? I don't... Why are you dropping names? Because I like dropping names, too. What the fuck is the matter with you? <laughs> was it? You're gonna get my ass kicked by some bikers because I'm telling everybody that hookers there. <laughs> What's the matter with you? Mark Whitehead is not a biker, dude. Who's Mark Whitehead? Asian dude. Why do you look at me like I know? I'm not even from here. You wanna know Asian dude? No. It doesn't matter. He's not whooping your ass. Don't worry. Where was I? All the rooms. Hookers. Yeah, light well, shows. Light shows. Anyway, Music. I struck up a conversation with one of them. 
and I said, "Hey man, how do you one get of the, a, one of the hookers?" No, one of the uh, one of the bikers. Okay. And I said, uh, "Hey man, how do you get an invite to something like this?" And he says, "Well, uh, do you drive a motorcycle?" And I said, "No, no, no. I uh, I'm kind of a puss, dude. I don't really do anything like that." And then he goes, "Oh no, no." You make then, crystal you, meth? <laughs> No, he wasn't even like that. Like, as soon as I said I don't ride a motorcycle, I'm kind of a puss, dude. He was like, oh, then never mind. No, you wouldn't fucking no. Man. He didn't even give me, like, straight dialogue for a no. He just kind of was like, no, 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 Yeah. Yeah. Pretty much how that went. And then one of those prostitutes came up to him and asked him for something, and he got in his pocket and handed it to her. It was a pack of cigarettes, and she lit one and handed it back. And she was, like, all over him. Well, this happened. And then she walked away. And I was like, dude, you gotta be a biker, dude. I was like, dude, what the fuck is going on here? Make the investment, dude. Buy I was a like, what is it? I got back to work. I was telling RJ, I'm like, dude, let's sell our cars right now. Go buy motorcycles in the morning after drinking and partying and go party and fucking hang out with the whores, dude. He wouldn't do it. He's like, no, 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 Domino's needs us. Or, I mean, I mean, our pizza place needs us. <laughs> you can't drop our work name after that conversation. <laughs> yeah, why'd you do it? Some bikers at home like, hey, he's talking about me. <laughs> <laughs> I ordered Domino's and didn't buy the ketchup bottle. <laughs> I like whores. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> I'm finally putting it together. <laughs> Jesus Christ. So we're well over an hour. Are we, uh, what do you guys think? Are we wrapping up? Can I add, I just wanted to add and add something on to you. You got to. Um, I don't know if I ever told you about this, but probably about a month, maybe within a month before you started back, I uh, I delivered to what appeared to be a hippie biker wedding, or the beginning, like the pre like stages, people getting ready for a hippie biker wedding. Um, getting Domino's to cater. Yeah, yeah, it was so weird. Um, Got to. Because it was like a, I, I think it was a Sunday if I remember right. Yeah, it was definitely a Sunday, and it was a timed order, <clears throat> and... Drew's best buddy, Chris, had taken the time to order the day before. Um, Chris Smith. Hey, Drew, when are we going to go and re go see wrestling? Huh? You're dropping so many names. <laughs> You're dropping so many names and making fun of people. <laughs> Good God. That's what editing's for. What is this now? Is this homework? <laughs> we invite you to our show, now I have homework. <laughs> Good God! Oh, I'm sorry. That's okay. Anyway. I regret nothing. Um, <laughs> anyway, yeah, he had taken the order the day before, and so I was the one to deliver it the next day, and it was like just afternoon, and uh, I get to this house, and uh, I don't see any cars outside. Was it by the ketchup bottle? No, no. Okay. It's, uh... You want to know where it was, roughly? Hmm. Yeah, sure. It's over on, uh, was it Crown? Okay, you've told me a little bit of this story before. Okay. okay. Yeah. I think I, kind of kind of like by the high school. Yeah, uh -huh. yeah. kind of up the hills yeah. there. Yeah. Um, when I pull up, there's no cars outside, but I do notice that there's like the side uh, yard has like two big fucking gates, like iron gates, and they're open. I was like, oh, that's odd. So I go up and deliver, and uh, this guy, because it was such a large order, as often happens with large orders, the guy's like, here, follow me, because they don't want to carry that shit. Um, so I follow him, and I end up in what appears to be like a chapel within the house. Whoa. Like high vaulted ceiling, and there was like a bunch of fucking chairs like set out for something, <laughs> some kind of going on. And then what, a, you know, just, I, I didn't like stare at it a long time, but like, you know, kind of like an altar space at the front end. Are you sure it wasn't like a ritual sacrifice? Well, here's this thing. Well, that could be too, but, um, and I noticed then that everybody is wearing 
tie-dyed t-shirt. Well, not necessarily he t-shirts, but everybody's wearing tie-dyed shirts. Um, a lot of the women are wearing tie-dyed dresses. But then over that, everybody's got on like a leather vest with like <laughs> embroidery on it. Yeah. And I'm like, what the fuck is... And I, I didn't even like have the time to really process it all. I was just like, oh, here's the order. Here's the receipt. Sign that. Okay, that's mine. Thank you. Out the door I went. And I'm like, there's like some kind of hippie biker <laughs> wedding or something going on here. Cult. Could be a cult. I don't know. But yeah, it was kind of odd. They had a baby in the cupboard. They were going to eat pizza and kill it. Could have saved it. Baby yeah. pizza. It's not his baby. <laughs> right. Not his baby. That's right. Is that it? That's it. That's it? Three, two, one. Wait. It's not his baby. But what? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, one more? No, I was going to I wanted to say, like... <clears throat> <laughs> That's not my baby. It's not my baby. <laughs> um, this is completely unrelated. All right. But like I said, I was listening to a couple of your episodes uh -oh. last night. Uh-oh. I listened to that one from July last night. Mm -hmm. And I just wanted to comment on the weirdness of... Because you told the story in there, the steamroller story. Oh, about my pops. Yeah. Mm hmm And I'm just like... I never, ever crawled into bed with my parents. And Isn't that anything. weird? That, it's, it's a little strange. I mean, maybe it's, it's probably a generational thing. You think I'm fucking weird? Um, no, it's just un very unusual to me. Because <laughs> my family was not, like... We weren't, like, kissy or huggy or... Hmm anything like that. like we did not we didn't really <clears throat> we didn't really okay like when i was really little like i would not i would not separate from my mother for any significant amount of time without demanding a hug and a kiss but at a certain age probably around four or five i don't know i kind of came to realize that i was the only only one in my family who's doing that so i just kind of like laid off but we were not like an if affectionate at all and again, like, I don't know, maybe it's just like a, a generational that thing. Might but be, that might be, yeah. That just seems, seems so strange to me. Because you're like, really? oh, yeah, you know, your dad doesn't have to... Like, well, that was, the first, that was the first thing that tripped me up. I was like, because my dad was... All of my life, my dad was like... Uh, and uh, did your brothers and sisters get it? Because you said you were the youngest. I don't they're, think so. I don't think so. Cause, cause my, well, because the thing... Well, <laughs> God, this is... Um, <laughs> No, uh... Like, we did steamroller for Timmy and Jim. We ain't doing it for you. <laughs> no, no. Too fucking um, old for that yeah. shit. <laughs> no, uh... I mean, the first thing that, like, kind of, like, was kind of a hiccup to me, like, was that, uh, you know, the whole, oh, you know, your dad's off work on Saturday. My dad worked most Saturdays. Like, because oh. he, he was always a... Uh, what about Sunday? Sunday he was he took off, but Did that you was steamroll your ass no, on Sunday. No, no, <laughs> <laughs> no, because uh, uh, what the hell? Like, uh, my dad was like self-employed for most of my life, so you know he set his own hours. But you know it was like he had to work like six days a week to fucking get by, and uh, or maybe he just chose to. I don't know. Maybe he was you know one of those people who just wanted to fuck. A... I haven't really talked a whole lot with my parents about their lives and whatnot. Maybe that's another weird... Maybe I'm weird for that reason. I don't know. I don't know. But... <laughs> but, uh... I don't know. A lot of people that, that I'm friends with in their 30s kind of kind of have that same sort of interaction with their parents where it's not really that much of an interaction. Really? Yeah. So it might be a generation. I had a professor in college, and she was... She was... She was right in an age where she could have been a sibling of mine. Like, she was in the age range of my siblings... And I told her one time, like, and she had, she has two kids of her own and she's just like crazy about, and, uh, and I, you know, just like li watching and listening to her go on at length about her kids. Like I mentioned to her one time, I said, you know, I said, it's so strange to me. I said the, the relationship I have with my parents is more like coworkers, you know, like 
we're we're congenial towards one another, but we don't like delve into one another's personal lives. And she yeah. just looked at me and she goes, "That's so sad." I'm like, "Is it?" I'm like, "It's just normal for me." Like, I don't yeah. know, but it was just kind of a funny thing. Funny, it, it seemed like a funny reaction. You think that's sad? I don't think it's sad necessarily. I mean, you just said, you just had a different. Experience. I mean, I'm so used to I'm so used to things the way they it's are. Like the way you're putting it, like you know, if you threw me into that, I'd be sad. But, Cause like I have a very affectionate family, like even uh -huh. my aunts and uncles too. But like you know, thrown in the middle of that, it'd be sad. But growing up that way, you probably wouldn't think it was all that sad yeah, at all. It's normal yeah. for him. Oh. And like, I mean, the the exception to that is like my brother. Um, my brother's uh, wife, I guess, was really you know close with her mom, and her dad was dead by the time that they got married. And then her mother died a few years afterwards. But I think she, she trained him in a certain way that like, he like, and he lives, you know, he lives away from them now too. But she trained him in a certain way that like, now he always, he always tells them I love you when they're on the phone at the end of a call. And I'm like, like that, that didn't happen before he got together with his wife. And really? so it's so, it's, it just seems so awkward to me. What's your parents reaction to that? Um, I think to the I love you. Yeah, it's I think they just said switch. love you too. It, like they, you know, it's like it's kind of like a robotic kind of thing. Yeah, like they didn't make a big deal out of it. Like they were like, "Why are you saying I love you?" No, no, they just kind of. I mean, they just, they just kind of went with it. But and it's cool that your parents rolled with it. I like that. Well, my yeah. my older my older I have a brother that's older than him then um, <clears throat> by a few years, and he, oh God. Um, he, I guess, after drinking one night, like, confronted them on this issue about the fact that they're not more affectionate. And I guess there was kind of a breaking point or something where mom's just like, well, you know, it's, it's hard to be like that when you weren't raised that way yourself. Yeah. So it's just like, you know, their own parents were like, what the hell... I mean, like, my dad's parents are dead now, but they were, like, God, by this, if they were still alive, would be, like, probably over, mm, I don't know, maybe mid-90s or so. But, uh, and then my grandma, my mom's mom is, like, 80-something. But, uh, I think it's that kind of like, you know, World War II era kind of like stalwart kind of keeping up appearances sort of thing. Mm -hmm. And then they just kind of, it just got passed down. Because like my parents are like, I, when I was younger at one point I made, I made some crack about, uh, uh, about fucking baby boomers and in, and like, and like basically threw my parent lumped my parents in with that uh, demographic and my mom got really defensive mm. and she's like we're not baby boomers we were born before you know before the war ended or some shit or you know too soon to be considered baby boomers yeah but uh, I think I think looking at the you know it's, it's a similar thing with me like they you know looking at the at the uh, the years by which that's the, the generations are usually divided they're they're considered cuspers between baby boomer and whatever the hell was before that which would have been, I don't know, was that greatest generation, maybe? I don't know. And uh, and I'm on the cusp between uh, Gen X and Gen Y, or Millennial. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's, it's kind of funny because, like, there's, like, there are things, you know, from either demographic as they're defi defined that I kind of attach to, but then other things I'm just like, what the fuck? But, I don't know. Were they were your parents affectionate towards each other at all? Um. Uh. Yeah, not overly though. Mm -hmm. You ever walk in on your parents doing it? No, no. I can't even imagine that. <laughs> imagine it right now. Why? Just a fun little experiment. Is it? <laughs> Like I have a, I, I had a friend back home who was going on about. Uh, back home, where are you from? Uh, I'm from Western Kansas, from a 
college town about 20,000 called Hayes. Okay. Um, but I had a friend back there who, uh, who was talking one day, like, what the hell was he saying? Like, oh, he was telling us, he was relaying to us the story of, of his conception. Hmm. And he's like, he, he thought it was all weird that, like, he was, you know, the few of us that he was talking to, he's like, he's like, you guys, your, your parents never told you about when you were conceived? I'm like, no? <laughs> Why the fuck would that have come up? Like, <laughs> what the hell's wrong with you? So I was fucking your mom one night, right? Yeah. <laughs> I'm raffling through the drawer looking for condoms, and she's like, fuck it. <laughs> oh. So I took a sip of my Miller High Life, and I said, you're right, baby. <laughs> fuck you. Don't worry, I'll pull out in time. <laughs> and that's how I was made. That's how you were made? Yeah. That's cute. Verbatim. Is that the end of the show? I don't know, is it? I'm done talking. Does that feel good? I just told you how bobbies are made. I think Ladies and gentlemen, point. if you'd like to make a bobby, you heard it here first. Anything you'd like to say? RJ. RJ Jean? You know what? What's your first name, dude? Yeah, what is your first That's name, dude? Me. You don't even know. Um, so, there was something that... I had a funny uh, situation the other day. All right. Um, that I think a lot of people have been in. Um, I drove up to Edwardsville to go to my bank because I, the the bank I use only has a, the closest branches up there, or I got to go to fucking uh, O'Fallon. And um, stopped in at Starbucks. Because I had just gotten up within like the hour or two. Looking for that pumpkin spice. Tis the season. I just had a regular latte actually. Okay. With uh, an extra shot. It was like a um, 16 ounce. And um, down that, went over to Michael's and bought, was looking for some shit. And then I went, uh, stopped at the Aldi in Glen Carbon because uh, the one here is shut down for three weeks, which is a huge disappointment, but they're remodeling. Mm. Um, but... Uh, He's real upset about Aldi. It's kind of bummer. Yeah, dude. But uh, Aldi is cool. Like, <laughs> yeah! That's like the main grocery store in Scandinavian countries. <laughs> I rip on it all the time. Anyway. Realized as I was finishing up at Aldi with my Aldi experience that I had to take a shit. Mm -hmm. And Dang. we've all been there, right? Had to hurry back, but it's like there's fucking traffic. Yeah. And you know, I just I really wished that you know I could just put like warning lights, like a flasher, like a police beacon on my car to just tear through traffic. And, you know, I just, I want to live in a world where we can have that, you know? Like a poop alarm? Right, right, right. Like a poop you see, I think people line. would abuse that. That's that's what I thought, too. Yeah. That's what I thought, too. But I think, you know... <laughs> you know, because my first thought was, my first thought was, yeah, you know, wouldn't it be great if I could do, like, a 70s cop show and just, like, roll down my window and just put this big brown beacon on the roof. <laughs> and it's just going, I can just tear ass through traffic and everybody's like, oh my God, that guy has to shit. Get out of his way, <laughs> right now. I was like, yeah, that'd be awesome. But yeah, there would be motherfuckers abusing it. Yeah. So. So there should be like a special police force that pulls people over <laughs> to check if they really got a poop. No, here's my answer, here's my answer. Um, but I was thinking of how tragic tragic it'd be if two poop beacon cars were to collide at an intersection. <laughs> There'd be shit everywhere, dude. There'd be blood <laughs> shit everywhere, right? It'd be fucking mayhem. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. Yeah, so, you know, I mean, I, 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 I wanted to believe that, you know, there'd be an element of shame to it that would maybe prevent people from abusing it, but you, you can't count on that, so... I think this is this is how it, how it's gonna work. The secret is in self-driving cars. Mm. 
15, 20 years down the road, when everybody has a self-driving car... Won't happen. Oil companies won't let it happen. <laughs> you, can, you can power a self-driving car with, with, with gasoline. It's just, you know, you, you're... I'm not talking about full electric. I'm just talking about how, you know, self-driving. Okay. Um, 15, 20 years down the line, that's going to be tied in with your phone. Your phone, you're going to be wearing some kind of bio uh, uh, sensor, some kind of feedback system, hap, you know, to, that feeds data into your phone. Mm -hmm. So there's got to be something that senses when you have to shit and can communicate that to your phone. Your phone can then in turn communicate that to your car. Yeah. And because your car is networked and everybody else's car is tied into the network, <laughs> everybody else's car responds and makes way for your car and you get, your car just goes on ahead and goes a little bit faster yeah. to get you to your destination. Maybe, it, it, you know, just to make, keep things fair, it doesn't even have to be to your destination. Just like the next, the next available empty shitter, mm -hmm. and that's that's the solution to that problem. We'll see. No more the accidents caused is... by caused by <laughs> imminent shits. The problem with that is like that's the technology that's going to gain sentience and enslave us. The poop technology. <laughs> like it's going, it's going to, it's going to recognize itself as a living thing. And You're saying as soon as they over. know when we poop, then it's over. Yeah, because. Like, when we're pooping, we're at our most vulnerable. They know our weakness, dude. They don't teach a self-defense class on how to fight when pooping. You're right. It's true. I doubt they taught Jesse Ventura that in the Navy SEALs. <laughs> yeah. So you're That's right. Yeah. I'm not right. You're right. Yeah. That's when they're going to take us over, when we're pooping. Yeah, dude. And I like how RJ sees the future <laughs> through the... Uh, uh, through the uh, experience of having to take a shit. Well, yeah. I mean, While you're on the road. While he's on the road. Necessity is the mother of invention. That's like what he's looking he forward really to in the future. He really had to poop, and that's, that's what he came up with. Not like immortality pills, or like, you know, cures for cancer, or, you know, like a dick growing ray, nothing awesome like that. He's totally Like he just wants to go poop, man. That's all he wants, is the shit when he has to shit. I yeah. mean, you know... It's like, short-sighted and like... <laughs> Long term, at the same time, you know, it's either that or you you cut a hole in in the in your car, and that's just impractical. It has all kinds of other problems. Yeah, you can't be cleaning up poop in the road. Well, no, I mean you wouldn't want to, and you wouldn't, you would refuse. No, yeah. nobody, nobody's gonna make you clean your own shit off the road. Well, I mean, like uh, if you had cars with holes in it. Yeah, but I'm saying, like, nobody's gonna own up to that. No. That's not my turd. Right. <laughs> we saw it fall out of your car, sir. That was the car ahead of me. <laughs> Absolutely. I would. You would? I wouldn't. Oh, yeah. But I would never, like, poop in the road. Maybe if we start cutting holes in cars to, like, poop, we could also have, like, on the, on the rear bumper, like, a baggy grabber <laughs> that, like, scoops it for you, and then you could just take the bag off and throw it away. I was thinking away. maybe you poop into, like, a big compartment under the car, and then you can just, like, pull it out. Composting toilets? That's way too easy of a solution. And you could, well, like, you could just pull it out like a catch <clears> tray. <throat> spray it out with a hose in the front yard and put it back. <laughs> don't let it pile up. Don't do it in the front yard, dude. People, people don't want to do that. Well, no, it's the future. Everybody has one. <laughs> It's just people not watering their lawn, but spraying out their uh, their poop catch tray <laughs> in the future in suburbia. Hi, We're John. watering and fertilizing at the same time. Hi, Margaret. Hi, John. Drew, I think with, with your talk of, of catch trays, you might be drawn too heavily on your food service you think so? experience. Yeah. I don't know, man. I think I can bring that to the vehicle. Really? What do you think, Bob? I don't know, man. Did you poop into a catch tray? I know. I would just wait. Like, I, because I can't even go in, like, public restrooms, so I train myself to wait until I get home anyway. Hmm. That'll be an option on your self-driving car. <laughs> oh, yeah. Next available or just home. Yeah. I, I'd always punch in home. Yeah. Can't do it. I fuck the ball game. Home! <laughs> <laughs> I get gunshot. I can't do it. I can't pull the trigger.
Is that a show? I think that's a show. Is that a show? Sure. Why not? I feel like that's a show. How long was that? That's a long show. Oh, uh, let's see. Oh, that's about an hour 49 minutes there. It's pretty good. Do you, do, you, do you finish up in any particular way? Ah, uh, do we? Not really. You can say bye if you'd like. A couple times we've said go fuck yourself. Yeah, we used to say go fuck yourself. Oh, really? Quit doing that. But I feel like that's. I feel like I've heard that somewhere else. Oh well, yeah, Bill Burr does it. Oh really? And then the whole ladies and gentlemen, my name is Drew Dory. That's Paul Heyman. So oh. we do all kinds of ripping off. Thank you very much. That was one of the one of the one of the ones I listened to is. Uh, I might have told you about this one. Um, get up on this. Yeah, you told me about that one. Get they uh, this. they uh, they finish with uh, "fuck your dreams," which I guess is from some rap huh. from somewhere. But yeah, it's kind of a fun. You guys want to say "fuck your dreams" on three? <laughs> three, two, one. How about, how about "fuck your dreams"? Oh shit! You know what? I have something in my car. Um. Let's go fuck that shit. Let's do fuck that shit. Fuck that shit. Okay. One. Two, three. Fuck, Fuck that, that shit. shit.